tips, tricks, hacks, I don't care what you call them. In my shop, they make my life easier, so I'm all about it. I'm gonna share 10 of my favorite shop hacks with you right now. So my back is still a mess. I found out I have a large herniation at the L5-S1. I don't know what that means, but it hurts. So I thought in order to bring some value to you guys, I would share my shop hacks with you. Now I have a ton of these, but we're gonna start with 10 of them for the day. I think that should be enough. Uh, there's not gonna be a lot of fancy editing. There's not gonna be a lot of that. Actually, I'm even gonna take my apron off because it's just too hot in my shop right now. Oh uh, wait, I'm, a, I'm attached to my microphone. Uh, there we go. So. Ow. Uh, let's, let's get to it. Shop hack number one. Really, really easy. Boom. Dry erase markers. Dry erase markers. I don't know if you can see those. Best things ever. I use them all the time, all around the shop, taking notes, uh, making measurements, figuring out what I want to show you guys. And kind of my favorite part is that when you're writing on paper, you have to go find an eraser and it takes time to do that. And it's a little bit of time, but it's a little bit of time every time there's a mistake. With this, psh, wipe your hand, done, gone, keep going. Uh, it doesn't really interrupt the flow of thought, which is awesome. Shop hack number two is really, really simple as well, but if you haven't thought of it, it's gonna be a little bit like, oh my God, a depth gauge for your drill bits. Now, if you need to go part way through a piece of wood and you don't know how far you have to stop, you use a piece of tape, really easy, check it out. The next shop tip actually deals with gluing wood together. Most of the time when you go to glue two pieces of wood together and you put the glue in the center, they slide when you try to clamp them. Really, really, really easy fix for that, but we gotta go to the kitchen first. Hugs. The answer is hugs. No, it's not. Just take that guy. Salt. Yes, regular, stupid, iodized table salt. Using it makes just enough friction between the two pieces of the wood and the glue that it doesn't go anywhere. The next shop hack was taught to me a long time ago by my father. So long ago, I can't even remember the first time I used this. And that is simply when you open a new can of paint, before you go to use it, take either a nail or an awl, or in this case, I'm gonna use a nail set. Go around the perimeter of the can and add some holes. That way, when you go to use the paint and you clean off your brush on the side of the paint can, that paint goes back into the can as opposed to rolling down the side or collecting around the rim keeping your project nice and neat. So now that I opened that specific can of paint, my uh, lab, my workshop, whatever you want to call it, actually reeks right now of paint. So I'm going to do a shop hack I wasn't planning on doing. Totally free of charge, here's your bonus tip. And I can't take credit for this one. This one I actually got from, I think, Bob Vila from this old house, or no, it wasn't him. One of the guys from this old house from their uh, awesome YouTube channel, which if, again, if you don't know about, you should totally check out. Lots of awesome stuff on there. Um, this is a ventilation hack, I guess you'd call it. Really simple to do. Um, I don't know how it's gonna come out on film because I have to film at the window with the light outside being very bright today, uh, but we'll see. First, measure the distance across your window frame and then find a piece of wood that matches that dimension. You're then gonna hold it up, open the window, and mark exactly where that open window space is on that piece of wood. Grab two screw hooks and put them into the wood in that open window space that you've marked out. You're then gonna take the measurements between those two screw hooks and transcribe that onto a box fan. Screw out those two holes, affix the piece of wood to the window frame. You know what? This might be a bad idea leaning over a table with a back injury. <laughs> and that face told me that this video wouldn't be up on time this week. But let's continue. Sometime later. Then all you gotta do is hang the fan from those hooks, plug it in, and bada boom, ventilation. Often when you're hanging something on the wall, you need a free hand to hold whatever it is that you're putting up. So instead of having all the screws in your hands, you can put a magnet on your drill to hold all of those screws for you, and it works great. Now number six deals with my favorite workshop duo, and that is CA glue and Activator, also known as Crazy Glue and the stuff that makes it stick really fast. 
Whenever you're using wood glue in the shop and you're putting two pieces of wood together, but you don't want to wait to have to clamp and let it dry, you can use CA glue and activator to temporarily hold the wood together, giving the wood glue time to dry, but allowing you to get on with your project. In order to get perfect 90 degree holes into a piece of wood, most people use a drill press. But if you don't have one, there's a great shop hack that can show you how to drill directly straight into a piece of wood. The first thing you do is take a right angle straight edge or a square and draw a 90 degree line to the side of a piece of wood. Then using that line that you've drawn to calibrate one direction and the wood itself to calibrate the other direction, as long as you keep them in line with both of those, you'll get a straight hole every time. Number eight is a really simple hack that I have used a ton. Remember that time that I was working with filters in my workshop and they exploded? Yeah, I'm still cleaning that up. And that's where I found this one. It sounds a little nuts, but just take a cup, drill a hole in the top just large enough for a straw and insert a straw. Then all you need to do is take it, put it on the top of your vacuum hose, turn on your vacuum, and now you can get into tight spaces real easy. This is a penny. It's three quarters of an inch in diameter. And this is an even smaller nail. Now, while most of us don't use nails this small, the principle of what I'm gonna show you works the same way. There is no way I can drive this nail into a piece of wood while holding it in my fingers without smashing my hand. Now, if I take a pair of pliers and I hold this, I can put it into the wood without any issue at all. The last of the tips, tricks, and hacks I'd love to share with you today starts by driving two screws into the back of your workshop door, then taking two magnets, putting them on a bottle opener, and putting that on the back of your door as well. So what's the point of this hack? Really easy. When you're done with all this work, it's time for soda. And you'll always know where your bottle opener is to open one. Do they even make soda in glass containers? In no? Well, whatever. We'll see you guys next time, Wednesday, four o'clock. If you love this one, click subscribe and make sure to smash that little bell icon. That'll attach you to me and anytime I upload something new to the internet, you will be made notified immediately. Take care. All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to cover 10 tools that will help you speed up your workflow in the shop so that you can make more money and spend less time doing stupid stuff. <laughs> All right, so before we jump in, we're gonna cover just a few things. Number one, why would you want to reduce the amount of time you spend in the shop? The number one reason is it's gonna bring down your labor costs. Unless you have some really rich clients that can pay whatever you decide to put on the invoice, it's gonna be in your best interest to try and bring your labor costs down as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Number two, it also helps you be less wasteful. So if you know exactly what you need to use to complete a task, uh, you have less waste when it comes to wood, waste when it comes to time, waste when it comes to, I don't even know, charging the batteries on your tools, little things that all add up in the long run. That's what we're gonna get into with the 10 things is the things that we've most noticed cost us time are not the operations of cutting at the miter saw mm -hmm. or ripping stuff at the table saw. It's the little things that like you don't really notice. Walking across the shop three times to grab your tape measure that you keep leaving on the opposite side of the shop or you lost your pencil. We're gonna get to that. Yeah, and then lastly, it's, it's it's just safer. If you have efficient, quick, very safe shop practices, it's gonna minimize the amount of time you spend in front of a power tool mm -hmm. or waiting for the next thing to happen, especially if you've got multiple helpers in the shop, you wanna make sure you stay out of each other's way, you're not using too much time in front of a power tool because the more time you spend in front of a power tool, the higher chance you're more likely to injure yourself or someone around you. So quick and efficient shop practices are gonna go a long way in helping you create more profit as well as be a safer woodworker. Safety police are gonna love this one. <laughs> All right, and it's really important to know before we get into these product recommendations, no one is sponsoring this video. All of the things you see here we've purchased with our own or our business's money, and they are just what we've found to be the most useful things. So we're gonna jump right in. All right, so coming in at number 10 is this fast cap tape measure. The things we love most about this are, it's a lefty righty tape measure. So if you open it up like this, you've got numbers and all the measurements on both sides of the tape measure. You don't have to flip it around. You don't have to move yourself around to the other side of the table to see what's in inches, what's in centimeters, whatever, because it's on both sides. So this is really nice because 
I'm right-handed and Davis is left-handed. Uh, and then we can both use the same tape measure and it's really convenient. Also on the front here, you can see this little white circle. This is a spot to jot down measurements. So as you're measuring and you're looking at stuff, usually if you have another piece of paper, like a scrap piece of wood that you write on, that's easy to lose. That's another piece of clutter in your shop. Just write it right here. It also erases. Uh, and then on the back of this is a pencil sharpener. And that's always convenient. And then it's got this little clip, clips right to your belt. So that is number 10, super convenient, writing down measurements, lefty righty. So think about how many times you use a tape measure in one single thing that you're making. It's a lot. And how many times are you spreading it out, turning your head to see the measurement on the other side, forgetting measurements, trying to find something to write them down on. This is just one convenient, I guess, one-stop shop for all of your measurements. All right, coming in at number nine is just a clock. Super simple. We sit it in our shop. Um, be safe while looking at this. Don't be, you know, in the middle of something using blades, saws, whatever, and then look up at your clock. Be safe about it. Um, but the main reason we have one of these is sometimes you don't realize how much time you're spending on one set thing. Um, I get it. We're all passionate about woodworking. We could stay in the shop and do this for hours on end. But that ends up being wasteful sometimes. If you're doing a project for profit, if you're doing it for a customer, if you're spending four hours on it and not even realizing it, again, that's what we talked about previously, your labor costs, you are putting labor costs up. So that's why you use this a lot of times. Um, if you're looking at this and you're realizing you're just having a slow day, maybe it's just taking you forever to do something you usually do pretty fast. Sometimes that can be a sign of, hey, maybe it's time to leave the shop. Maybe you need to do something else productive today um, because you're spending a little bit too much time on one part of your project for a customer. Maybe you need to go inside, work on your QuickBooks, design some logos, spend time with your family. Maybe it's just a family day. Just pay attention to that and a simple clock, super easy. So that's number nine for us. All right, so number eight on our list is a mechanical pencil. Seems super simple, but a mechanical pencil, put them everywhere. We say mechanical pencil because when the lead breaks, two clicks, instantly you have more lead. You're not wasting time sharpening pencils. You're not wasting time looking for a sharpener. It's instant, lead breaks, you have more. And we say put them everywhere because how many times have you left it on one side of the shop and you're on the other side saying, where's my pencil? Sometimes that's a good minute wasted looking for the one pencil you have in your shop. Buy a box, dump them out, throw them on each of your tables in the shop, uh, and then you'll never forget your pencil. So definitely number eight for us. All right, coming in at number seven, we have Google SketchUp. This tool takes a long time to learn. It does, Jay Bates has a, a wonderful series of tutorials on how to learn to do Google SketchUp, but I promise you, if you invest the time up front, it will save you so much time on the back end, especially when you're trying to pitch client, pitch deals to clients, when you're trying to like rework the joinery on something, when you're doing, I, just when you're, when you're thinking about making a new product, it's so handy to have Google SketchUp as a tool in your tool bag to just be able to whip it out and think through everything. Because by the time that you build it in Google SketchUp, if you've done your job, you know exactly what joinery methods you're gonna use, you know exactly how much material to buy, you're not gonna waste any material, you're not gonna spend all the time pouring over your notes and pieces of paper to, oh, how much waste am I gonna have here? Oh, shoot, I didn't buy enough plywood. You, you know exactly how much that you're gonna use when you go to the store and buy it. So that's why we think it's super important to save you time just to learn how to use Google SketchUp, get proficient at it, and then after that, um, yeah, that's just another tool in your back pocket you can use. What we found works best for us, just learning Google SketchUp, model things that you've already built. Do your workbench, do your assembly table, do uh, your drill press stand, whatever it is in your shop that you know how it goes together. Take some quick measurements and then build it in Google SketchUp. And that's gonna be the quickest way to learn. That way, when you're imagining a new part, uh, you're not trying to learn the program at the same time. You're not working both muscles, you're only working one creative muscle. All right, number six is an efficient shop layout. It's not really a tool, but it kind of is in a way. You wanna spend a lot of focus and energy on making sure that your shop layout is in such a way that the natural progression of your project moves through the shop from one side to the other. That limits the amount of times you walk back and forth across your shop, because that adds up to be a lot of time. We even have our shop laid out in Google SketchUp so that if we're thinking about moving something around or adding a new benchtop tool, we can go ahead and lay out the shop in SketchUp and we know exactly the flow of projects through our shop. It takes a little bit of planning, but it will save you a ton of time on the back end. 
All right, so number five for us is a dust collector. For a while, we didn't have a dust collector. We would just do the small ones that came with tools, like the one that's on the back of an orbital sander or something like that. Otherwise, we just didn't have any. There was dust everywhere. It was constantly a mess, sweeping probably twice a week in our shop, like full on moving stuff, sweeping, opening the garage, brushing it all out. And again, there's a time waster. Anytime you're talking about how frustrating something was because you had to do something so many times, you've officially wasted time and sometimes your own money. Yeah, dust collector, it's awesome. Cleanup is great. But the other aspect that we were kind of looking into when we bought the dust collector was safety, uh, health and safety, I guess. You don't realize how many tiny particles are constantly floating around the shop as you're sanding uh, when you make several cuts all at one time. You know, small particles make it into your lungs easier than larger particles do. And for us, it's just a safety thing. We're in here a lot. So we figured we'd invest in some cleanup and invest in our health a little bit so we're not constantly wearing masks. All right, coming in at number four is some sort of heating or air conditioning system. Now, we don't have anything permanent in our garage, but that's something we're definitely gonna fix after we move to the south. I am not gonna spend any time worrying about the amount of money it costs to put in a heating and air conditioning system into our shop. I can't tell you how many times I have wasted an hour or two waiting for the garage to heat up when I could have been working. So whether it's hot or cold in your climate, if you are not working in the workshop because of the temperature in the workshop, you need to fix that. If you're a business, if you're making money, you should be focused on how much money is going into the business, not, much, not how much money you're spending. So make a few more sales, get some money, pay a heating and air conditioning person to put a mini split or some type of system in your garage because I have personally wasted so, so many hours of my limited amount of time I have for the shop in waiting for the garage to heat up to where I could work on things without my fingers sticking to the metal because it was so cold. Invest in, we also have a dehumidifier. Another thing that took a long time for us was once we got the shop heated up, it also raised the humidity in the shop because of all the ice and stuff in the concrete. And so a dehumidifier really went a long way into helping glue dry faster, finish dry faster, even after we had heated up the shop. So you may want to look into that option as well, uh, especially if you use a swamp cooler as your AC option. I know a lot of people use those in drier climates. Those are great, but just keep in mind too, that's going to keep your finish and glue from drying as well. So you may want to look into a dehumidifier. I was going to make a joke about how you can, can never have too many clamps, but even that joke is overused. Ha ha We're gonna move ha! On. You're so funny. But in all reality, clamps come in at number three because they are nice and I guess you kind of sort of can't ever have enough of them, whatever. So I mean, that just comes with stocking your shop with clamps. If it's something that's gonna save you time and it's saving you a trip to the store three times because you figure out you're missing a clamp in a certain size for a desk you're making or whatever, it's worth it just to have them ready instead of wasting time or trying to find a fix that's not a clamp and doesn't work as well as a clamp and all of a sudden your project looks half as good as it could. So another thing we found out too is that if you are adjusting your project workflow or the workflow of your shop around how many clamps you have, go buy more clamps because <laughs> you're sacrificing the quality of your build. And we learned that at the beginning. I can almost remember the exact project we were doing where we were like, well, we don't have that many clamps, so we're only gonna be able to get one glue up done tonight. And we just looked at each other like, how ridiculous is that, that we're sacrificing productivity on a project for a client who's paying us because we only have three out of the five clamps we need. So, all that being said, go buy yourself some clamps and uh, make your projects look nice. Another, not really a tool, but still a tool is your shop organization. I'm not a huge fan of all these like super fancy and expensive tool organization systems, but what I am a fan of is anything that gives you first order retrieval of your tools. Something like a tool wall, you don't need that super expensive, what is that, wall control stuff is the brand or whatever it is. They're giving away a lot of stuff to other makers. That stuff's nice, but man, is it expensive and it accomplishes the same exact thing as a piece of plywood with a bunch of nails and screws in it. You want first First order retrieval. Whatever's in a drawer, you don't want to be like shuffling and digging under things to try and find the tool because that's going to add up over time if you need to get in the drawers five different times on a build. So focus on making it to where you have shelves 
or drawers or something like a wall system where all you have to do is look or open a door and grab what you need. It also helps because you can see where something is missing. Oh, do I already have that tool or do I need to walk all the way across the shop? It's gonna save you a lot of time and therefore money to just have first order retrieval on all of your tools. Another thing too, a lot of people like to keep their tools in the nice padded cases or polystyrene blow molded cases that they came in. That's all nice if you're trying to protect your tools, but if you're a shop that's trying to make money, every minute you spend pulling your tools in and out of a box or a bag is a minute lost to the customer that they're not really paying for. So you wanna make sure that you've got first order retrieval. If you're afraid of your tools getting broken, you're not thinking correctly about how to use your tools as a business. You shouldn't be babying them, they're tools. They're meant to be dropped and worked and used and when they're worn out, you buy a new one. That's just how business works. Don't abuse your stuff, you gotta balance it. And then the number one thing, these are not in any order, but the newest thing to us is a new track saw. This made the list for us because, oh my gosh, how much time I wasted trying to come up with different ways to cut giant pieces of plywood because I didn't have a track saw or a very nice circular saw. I had a very cheap circular saw. It was the very first tool I purchased. It was on clearance at Home Depot for like $13 or something. And it was terrible. I have an extra thin blade on it, which I thought was cool when I bought the saw but you really need a full size thick blade so it doesn't bend and wobble, otherwise you don't get perfectly square corners on your plywood cuts. So I used to spend so much time and effort, like I would even change the design of a project so I wouldn't have to use the circular saw to cut the plywood down. Tons of wasted time. Just get a track saw, it's stupid simple. Like you just lay the track down over your pencil line and then you go, it's that simple. You don't have to have any sort of a door board, you don't have to have any sort of clamping down and then oh it moved or there's sawdust in the way or I got off track. Literally lay it down, zip it across, move on to the next thing. I can't tell you how excited we are that we have a new track saw in the shop that will save us so, so much time. So yes, they're more expensive, but I'm gonna save that much money in labor in the first month that we use it. So it'll definitely pay for itself. Do you have any bonus tips to share? My bonus tip is don't include any bonus tips because your viewers are officially sick of watching. Bonus tips! <laughs> so, number one, try to find tools that do multiple things. I know that we like to have like unitaskers. It's just like kitchen gadgets. Um, try to avoid buying tools that only do one operation, unless you do a ton of that operation. So an exception would be something like an orbital sander or a Festool Domino, something that's really, really good at what it does, but you use it a lot. If you're trying to buy uh, something that is a little jig or something like that that you don't do but like once a month, it might not be worth it for you to buy that jig. You'd be much better off saving your money up to buy a track saw and, and selling your circular saw than if you bought a thousand little plastic jigs from somewhere online that really help you with one operation a month. Focus on where you spend most of your time, what kind of projects that you do, which we're coming out with another video soon on projects that are really easy to sell, make you a lot of profit margin, and that are pretty tough to mess up, even if you're a beginning woodworker. So be on the lookout for that video. Until then. What did we miss? Let us know in the comments if there's anything else that makes your top 10 list the thing that saves you the most time. What is your big time saver? So let us know down in the comments. This is one of the best communities as far as helping each other out and sharing tips and tricks. So we'd love to hear what works best for you. Please subscribe if you like us. We put out content like this to help you with your woodworking business every single week. If you are a subscriber, we would also ask that you give us a thumbs up if you thought this video was helpful. We wanna grow and share and help build this community into something that, that's even better than it already is. So that starts with helping some makers make a little bit of extra money during the month to maybe help pay a car payment, buy something for your spouse, or help just pay the rent. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.